That's okay. Welcome, welcome, Christopher Cantrell, uh, to Paso da Camino, a project um, about the Camino Santiago to the Camino Santiago. It's an honor for me to have you here talking with me. Thank you so much for for accepting this challenge and being oh, able pleasure. to talk with me. So let's start with a challenge. Let's see if you can guess. I will play two songs and you have to uh, connect them to, to the Camino, okay? Okay. Okay, the first one, now the second. So, the first song, it's called Nadal Blue Intra, it's a Spanish song, mm -hmm. and the second one is Thank You from Alanis Morissette. I've heard both of them, I've heard, I've heard both of them many times on, on Camino videos on YouTube, <laughs> uh, but that's about as far as I can go. I don't know that I know the lyrics. Okay. Um, um, no way. They certainly, are... certainly, thank you is is the 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 connection with the Camino is is just the just the motive of gratitude. Do you know these two songs? Yeah, are are both both of them are on the movie The Way. <laughs> okay, maybe that... that's where I heard it. I don't know. <laughs> So let's start really. But I did the Camino before I saw the way. So <laughs> that's amazing. So, um, Christopher, um, can you tell us a little bit um, how your story um, with the Camino has started? Well, as you might have figured out, I'm a, I am a priest, I'm an Anglican priest. Uh, I had heard about the Camino a long time ago is something that happened in the Middle Ages, something in history, and, and didn't really know much about it at all. Uh, but then, then after, uh, I want to say probably in 2005, maybe around in there, a friend of mine got out of seminary and went went to Spain and walked the Camino, and he and he put it on a blog. It was right when people were starting to do blogs. And so he did, he, he blogged his Camino on the Camino Frances and I was captivated. I thought, this is amazing, this is cool. I wanna go do this, but I can't. Uh, Anglican priests can be married. I am married, I have four daughters and my children were all in school. And so there wasn't any way I was gonna go off to Spain for a month and, and go do this. Uh, it, it worked out uh, in 2010 that my bishop offered me a, a grant to take a sabbatical, to have some time off. And he, he said, 
He said, if you can get your parish to, to cover your absence, I'll give you a little bit of money and you can go do something. And it immediately leapt to my mind that I needed to go do the Camino. And I started researching it and looking into it. I had to talk my wife into letting me do it. Uh, she didn't understand why I would want to go away from home for a month by myself. Uh, but God takes care of these things and St. James helps. And so it, it long story short was I, I got the time to go. I went with my wife went with me to Barcelona and a parishioner of mine had a, her, her cousin is a doctor outside of Barcelona. He's been, there, he's from Peru, uh, but he's been there for many years. Well, he and I, he, uh, my parishioner said, you have to go stay with cousin Domingo. <laughs> I don't know cousin Domingo. Oh, but he'll like you. You'll, you'll, you, you need to go see cousin Domingo. So my wife and I went and we stayed with cousin Domingo and his wife for a week. And we saw Barcelona and we were just tourists. And then my wife got on the airplane and flew home. And I, I got on the train in Barcelona and went, went up to Pamplona, got on the bus in Pamplona and went over the mountain to San Juan and started walking. And so I spent from, from the first of September, beginning of September into October, uh, I walked the Camino Frances from Saint Jean. Uh, and it was amazing, absolutely incredible. Uh, like you, it changed my life. As a priest, like you said, um, how special for you, uh, it was, uh, walking the, the, the footsteps of St. James? Well, it's not so much his footsteps. It's, yeah. the, it's the footsteps of the millions, millions of pilgrims from all over Europe that flowed through there. Uh, that had a profound effect on me. The, 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 the entire way is motivated by people walking for religious reasons. Uh, that was that was profound to me. The other thing that was that was startling to me was uh, I'm from Arizona originally. I grew up on the Mexican border. My dad's a priest, and 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 we lived in a little border town down in a place called Bisbee, Arizona. And I discovered walking through Navarra why the Spaniards liked the Southwest of the United States. Over and over and over and over again in little pueblos across the top of Spain were echoes of my childhood. I could see it in the architecture. I could see it. I could see it in the plants growing in people's yards. <laughs> uh, just so much of my early childhood had been, had been shaped by Spanish culture in all sorts of ways that I didn't understand uh, that, that suddenly became real to me uh, on the Camino. I, I, I remember writing in my journal telling, saying, uh, you know, it's like, I've been here before, but I've never been here before. Uh, and it just, it's a wonderful sense of, of connection uh, over and over again through all of that as just a profound experience for me. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Um, let's do two questions into one. Um, what was the most challenging part of it, and the most amazing part of the amazing amazing part of it for you? Challenging part was the the combination of uh, just the physical exertion of walking day after day after day. Uh, there were a couple of very hard physical days that uh, that I remember just just having to having to reach into myself and find <laughs> that it, I had to keep walking when I wanted to just stop. You know, I, that's that that was probably the biggest one of the biggest challenges was the was the physical challenge. Uh, most amazing. Oh, well, over and over again, there, there were things that happened that 
seemed to take care of whatever I needed. You know, you've heard people say the Camino provides. Yeah. Well, I say Santiago provides. Uh, <laughs> this guy over here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had a, I, I had a, a, I brought a Swiss army knife with me. But I discovered the first time I went to use it that it was very dull. And I thought, well, why in the world did I bring a dull knife with me? This is ridiculous. I couldn't, I, I think I wanted to cut a piece of, of, of chorizo and, and I couldn't cut even this piece of sausage. So, so when I got to Burgos, uh, that, uh, that was the, right after that most challenging day, I got, I got, I got, got to Burgos and the, I decided to take a rest day in Burgos. And the, and the second, the second day I was there, I, uh, my, that's another story I could tell you. Uh, but I, I, I ended up in a little hotel for the second night because the first night I stayed in the albergue, the second night I stayed in the hotel. And, and when I checked into the hotel, I took a nap and I got up in the afternoon and I thought, well, now what am I gonna do? But I have this knife that I'm, that's worthless to me. And it was heavy, there was all, you know, it's got all the other tools on it. Yeah. And I thought, why am I carrying this? And I walked out the front door of the hotel and I looked up and directly across from the front of the hotel, I hadn't seen it when I walked in, when I checked in. It was only after I walked out and right in front of the, the door, just right, right there in front of the hotel was this tiny little building, strange shaped, triangular shaped building. And, it, and, and in the window of this store, knives. <laughs> swords axes anything sharp was all right 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 in front of me was this knife shop and i and i walked i walked into the store with my my swiss army knife and i and i i asked the the young lady at the counter i said do you sharpen knives and she's oh yes 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 she took my knife and she put it in a little basket and it it went up through the roof through the ceiling of the of the room uh, a little rope pulled the bucket up through the roof and she said just a minute just a few minutes just one, one moment so I, i'm waiting in the knife shop for a couple of minutes looking at swords i didn't need to didn't need a sword uh, but then a little head came, a little man stuck his head out of the root the hole in the root in the ceiling <laughs> and he and he and he says are you a pilgrim peregrino and i said see sí, see sí, so it's peregrino he said, gratis, gratis. <laughs> he, he sharpened my knife for free, you know, but I was like, okay. How, how was it that this knife shop was right there <laughs> when I needed, when I needed my knife sharpened? Uh, don't do this to me. Days, days before that, uh, when I, I, I stayed in, in, uh, in Estella. And I was walking with, I had a pair of pants with me that had zip off legs, you know, hiking, hiking trousers yeah. that you can take the legs off and you wear shorts. Well, I had taken the legs off during the day as I was walking into Estella and uh, did my laundry after I got checked into the albergue and I hung my pants up on the, on the line, but I, I didn't zip the legs back onto the shorts. So I had the shorts on the line and then the pant, the legs next to that. Well, uh, no, I didn't put the legs up. I didn't put the legs up, I just put the shorts up there. Well, the next day I got into Los Arcos and discovered that I had left my shorts uh, back in, yeah. in Estella. So I didn't have any clean clothes to put on. And so the next day, the next morning, I was, I was, I, I put those shorts back on and I walked into Viana. And not only had I run out of that, I had run out of contact solution for my eye, for my contact lenses. And in Los Arcos, I had tried to buy, I, I tried to buy some contact solution and they only sold it by the leader. I'm not going to carry a leader. Yeah. <laughs> so so I, I i i i just said well i'll wear my glasses you know i'll, I'll get along without my contacts 
Well, I walked into Vienna that next day and I got to the to the square in front, right, right in front of the, the, the plaza, right in front of the church. And I saw a friend, another, a peregrina, and, I, and I, Johanna. And I said, would you watch my mochila for me? Because she said, oh, sure, sure. Because on the way into town, just before the, the church on, on the right, there's an outdoor store, a clothing store. And I walked in the door of the clothing store and on the, just inside the doorway, there was a rack of clothes and they had pants with zip off <laughs> legs for clearance, for dis discount, for, for you know 25% of the total price, almost free. <laughs> so so I, I, my pants were replaced. And then when I came out of the, when I came out of the clothing store, I looked across, the, across this, little, this little street and there was a pharmacia. <laughs> and I walked in the pharmacia and she had the little, the little contact lens solution size, you know, the little tiny ones. Yeah. Suddenly everything I needed, I had in Vienna. That's the Camino. <laughs> yeah, it was just, you know, but, but the combination of the pants and the contact solution and running into Johanna to watch my mochila while I did all this, it was amazing. It is, it is. Over, uh, and over, over and over and over again, the Camino provides. That's what I'm saying. And that's it. That's it. That's, there's nothing more to say about that. That's it. The Camino provides. Um, so, um, passing by, um, I can remember at least three, but um, El Alto del Perdón, the Iron Cross, and Osebrero. How it was like for you passing by these uh, special places? I had watched YouTube videos <laughs> over and over. I watched every video of the French way that I could find before I went. So those were those were landmarks. Certainly the Alto de no, Pardon. Uh, I got there early. I got there pretty early in the morning. It was the it, I'd stayed just outside of Pamplona the night before, so I was still pretty fresh when I got up there. That was. But that was like the gateway to the rest of Navarre. Over the top of that, on the back side, was when I when it first really began to hit me how much, like how much it felt like Arizona. Like my childhood was was that morning was was walking down from. Back was just I I, I had, these waves of emotion, just how how strongly it felt like home. And how happy I was to be to be out there. Uh, Osebrero, uh, the Valcarce is my favorite, my favorite valley of of any that I've seen. Uh, it just I've now been up there twice to, to Osebrero through there. Uh, it's just beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I. I love the story of Osobrero, the, the, the miracle. Uh, a friend of mine takes groups of veterans along with him and, uh, and he's gotten to say mass in the church up there. I, uh, as an Anglican priest, I've not, I've not been able, I don't have, I don't have uh, the, the privilege of saying mass in, in churches along the way. Uh, so so that, that, that's something that I wish I could do some. Uh, but I remember, I remember walking into the, into the church in Osobrero and the sense of how holy that place is, is, is powerful. Uh, the, the presence of God in that little church to me that day was just, just overwhelming. Uh, and it just stopped me. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, wow! That that what that was that was, the, that was one of the most powerful experiences along the way, was was the to to feel the presence of God in that church, uh, and, and and I knew the story about you know the guy that came in the snowstorm, and the priest berated him for how stupid he was for going up there, <laughs> and and how God made Himself manifested to that guy. 
uh, and shut that priest's mouth. Uh, to think of that and to think of Father Bellino who, who, who brought the Camino back, yeah. you know, in that same place. All of those things kind of feed into, into what hit me. Uh, but it was a, it was a, an amazing moment that, that, and I was in the church by myself. There wasn't anybody else around. And that, that too was surprising to me because it was, it, it was late September, early October. There were lots of people in the, in the village, but there just didn't seem to be anybody else inside the church with me aside from God. Uh, so anyway, that oh, Sabrero, so uh, La Cruz de Ferro, I'm so glad to hear the news that they've backed <laughs> off. They've backed off of the plan to to improve the Cruz de Ferro. I'm I'm still upset about what's been done in Fonsi Bellon uh, with paving the street. Uh, when I went through there the first time in, 20, in 2011. It was very, it was very rough. It was very primitive. Uh, I did, I remember I stopped, I, I had spent the night in Ravenal the night before and I, I stopped at the, at the albergue in, in Fonsi Bellon and had a, had a cup of coffee and, a, and an interchange with a cat. It was a big black cat. I called him the king of Fonsi Bellon. Uh, Cause he was obviously in charge of everything there, but, but, but to just, I was happy to get to the cruise. It was not a, it was not a big as much a big emotional experience for for me so much there. Uh, Osabera was far more powerful than that. Now, so if you're comparing the things, yeah. <laughs> uh, about the Iron Cross, um, you may not know, but I was a bit involved with the um, with the. Uh, the, the, the campaign against the, the you know, what, what it is the mayor wanted to do with the Iron Cross. Fortunately, last, last night, good news came up uh, about if we could If we can stop the windmills now. That will be hard. We are, we are just a group of pilgrims from all over the world. Um, no, I'm in. I'm in. Together, together. And... Um, If it's a World Heritage site, then it, then then we all have a stake in it. Yeah, but but uh, I guess the windmills it's harder because we are uh, now we are speaking with big uh, energy companies, you know, uh, with uh, more interests uh, and uh, contacts uh, within the the government and and that stuff. It's hard. It's it's. We are we are going to fight that, but it's harder it's harder than uh, fighting uh, with a local mayor. Well, I think I think the roots need to be protected. Definitely, and that there, definitely, there definitely, to, definitely. There ought to be there ought to be at least some agreement as to how much how much of a zone there is on either side uh, that 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 will be protected. Uh, and I understand the competing interests of energy companies and everybody else. Uh, and I know that the landscape changes. I mean, the pictures that I've seen of the of, of the cruise uh, from, you know, I think on the on the Facebook group, there was some pictures from like 1908 yeah, or something yeah. like that. Uh, I, well, there was nothing out there. And, you know, now there's kind of the planted forest that obviously somebody's growing some trees and we'll cut the trees and make some money and that's up that's fine uh but i don't think we need to make it disneyland no no uh so it yeah i i, I think there's I was, I was happy to see all that and happy to see it come that some reason has been listened to actually about that about you i listen yesterday i listened to something about that it was the same quote uh and that's really, really interesting. Um, so let's follow our, our, our talk. Um, you know, um, looking back, looking back, um, and you almost answered that question, but uh, like I was telling you before, before we start our talk, recording our talk, the Camino changed my life. That's why the Camino is so important for me. That's why I'm devoted to Santiago. That's why I love everything about the Camino. 
Um, and for you, looking back, um, how the Camino is so important for you, to you in this case? I just, I, I, I feel the call. I know, I, I know that the tug, the, the, the draw of, uh, it, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about the Camino. And I know that I know that's common for, for other pilgrims that, that, I mean, every single day, there is not, there, there is not a day that goes by that I'm not thinking about it, not, not looking at pictures or, or discussing it or, uh, people around me get tired of hearing me, <laughs> but I, uh, it is, it is, it's deep in me. So, um... uh, I mean, I've, I haven't been able to go, I, I'm not able to go every year. Yeah. I've gone, I've gone to Spain every other year since the first, since 2011. Uh, I've I've done the I've I, I did the Camino Frances from Saint Jean, but that's the longest I've ever been able to go is for for the five weeks or so that I took to do that. But every 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 other time I've gone, I've been able to go for at least two weeks. Uh, in 2019, I went back and did I, I was there for three weeks. I walked from Leon to Oviedo on the Camino San Salvador, and then I did from Oviedo to Santiago on the Camino Primitivo. I want, um, to, I want to do that this year. Oh, do it, do it. I already, I already have done it the Primitivo, not the Salvador, but- uh, Oh, do the Salvador, do the Salvador. That, that's it, that's my Camino for this year. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I know it's time and time, yeah. time, is, time is precious. And to be able to, to, be able to have the time, uh, if, if I could do it, I would, I would walk every year. And I would and I would walk at least for a month, but my wife would <laughs> kill, kill you. Would skin me alive. Uh, she wouldn't. She told me after the last time when I was gone for three weeks, she said that's too long for you to be away. Uh, I, it's hard to describe how 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 I feel while I'm walking. Every single time I have walked into Santiago, no matter from which direction. I am overwhelmed by emotion when I walk into the plaza. Maybe, maybe you can uh, try to uh, convict, uh, convict, try to um, uh, go, go, go walk the Camino with, with your wife. Oh, she didn't want to do it. She didn't want to do it. <laughs> she, she's told me flat out. She, and she does it. She. I, I don't mind sleeping in albergues. She doesn't want to sleep in an albergue. <laughs> uh, I, 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 can I can travel very simply and, 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 and easily where she would want much more support physically, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it, so it's just, it's, it's, it's a, and, it, and it's something that I know that, it's, that I'm hooked. I, I'm addicted like so many. That's amazing. Um, so, Chris, uh, Christopher, um, okay. um, now can you share some some stories, some experiences that you lived while the Camino that are special for you, please? Well, you've already you've already gotten a couple of those stories from me. The 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 to back up a little bit. The day I walked into Burgos, I had. I had spent the night before in Villafranca, Montes de Oca, at the very nice albergue there in the back of the hotel. And that's, that's a phenomenal place, San Anton. Uh, but I, I was feeling really good. And I, was, I, had, I was well into my, into my walk and my, I was pretty healthy and my feet were good and so I, I decided to walk from Via Franca into Burgos, and it was almost too much. Uh, the day kept getting warmer and warmer, and there was not much shade once I got past Ajes. And, and by the time I got to the edge of, of, of Burgos, 
I walked in by the airport. I don't know if the route still goes goes that way or not, but but there's you walk around the end of the airport into a into a place. I think it I think it's fun. I think it's a, I think it's called Fun Fria. Uh, that's right out by the airport, and uh, I was following John Briarley's guidebook, and he talked about how that the the rest of the walk into Burgos was was not very not very nice. He said it was very very industrial, and 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 so by the time I got to the to the restaurant in Fonfri up just past the airport, I was exhausted. I could hardly think. I had run out of water, so I was very thirsty, and it was hot, and I was sunburned. Uh, I walked into the, it was the Buenos Aires restaurant. <laughs> I, wa I walked in there, and I was I was so so wiped out. Uh, all I could think to do was to ask the woman at the at the counter, "Does the bus stop here?" And she, she told me, she said, yes, yes, we'll be there in just a couple of minutes. So instead of getting something to drink, instead of, instead of cooling off, all I could think was I've got to get on the bus and I've got to get downtown to the, to the albergue. And so I went back out front and I sat down on the curb to, to wait for the bus. And it was just a couple of minutes and the, and the city bus came by and I got on the bus and I rode, rode down into the old town and I found the albergue and I got to the out, checked in and, and I was just, I couldn't think. Uh, I, as I said earlier, I had the, the, the inspiration to go to the Camino the first time was and from the albergue in Burgos, I called my friend Lee and I said, I can't think. I'm. I don't know if I can go on. I don't know. I, I don't know where I. Am. And he says, Oh, I know where you are. And then the the advice he gave me, he said, he said, you need to go get a hotel. And take a bath. As long as you can soak, and then take a nap and sleep for as long as you can sleep, and then go eat. Go eat everything you can find to eat. And so that's how I ended up in the in the hotel the next night in front of the knife shop, uh, and it was. But I could I was so exhausted I couldn't even rationally work out what to do next. And if my friend Lee had not been on the other end of the phone, and picked up and said, "Yeah, I know what you need to do. Rest." Uh, I I don't know what I would have done. I it, I, I I was wrung out that way. I had a similar experience the next time I, I, I went, I went on the Primitivo and I walked the Hospitalis route yeah. uh, and I got, I, it was a fantastic day, beautiful day, amazing day. When you <laughs> climb over the top of the ridge and, and you can see forever in all directions and there's wild horses and uh, it's just, it's amazing. I got into Berlo, I got into Berlocedo with my my friend Alfonso, who's now one of my best friends in the world. He lives in Madrid, uh, and that's the other thing about the Camino: the, the the friendships and connections that I've made with people are are incredibly powerful. Definitely, I have, um, I have friends from all, all, all over the world. Oh yeah. Well, Alfonso and I walked into Berlocedo, and we went at, we we got checked into this the private albergue there. And we went out and we got something to eat for dinner and went back to sleep for the night. And I had a horrible night. I was, I had chills. I was shaking. I woke up in the middle of the night and my body was just going like this. Uh, and all I could think of was that day in Burgos. And I looked and we got up the next morning and I, I told my friend Alfonso, I said, I've, I've got to go find a hotel and take a day off. I said, if you can help me find a taxi, I'll go, I'll go down the road and I'll wait for you. So we walked out of the albergue. It was 7.30 or eight o'clock in the morning. And we looked up and on the, on the telephone post, there was a... outside of the albergue, there was a sticker and it said, said taxi Angel. 
<laughs> and so Angel was there. <laughs> and I said, can you call him? And, and Alfonso got his phone out and he calls on hell. This guy, the, the, the name on the sticker. And, and the man answered the phone and he, and he woke this guy up. I mean, it was eight o'clock in the morning. He was, he was still early. And, and we were standing outside of his house. Oh my God. <laughs> and Alfonso was talking to this guy and he says, he says, give me a minute. Just, just, you know, can you wait just a minute? So we waited for a couple of minutes and he obviously was just getting out of bed. I mean, he got up, got his clothes on and came, came down, opened up the gate. And they talked in Spanish very rapidly, and I couldn't understand any of it. Uh, but basically, he agreed to take me down the road to Fonsagrada, which was two days' walk from Berdecelo. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to Fonsagrada. I'm going to I'm going to spend the night in a hotel. I'll I'll wait for you to come in the next afternoon, and then we'll go on from there together. And I he's okay, fine. So Angel took me took me 50 kilometers up to Fonsagrada uh, and dropped, dropped me in the, at, at the hotel, uh, which was next door to the church. I got, I had everything I needed again. <laughs> there, was a, there was an ATM right next to the church so that I could pay, I could pay on help because I didn't have enough cash in my pocket. Uh, so, so, I mean, I, I had, I got into, I got into the, to the Hotel Cantabria uh, next door to next door to the church. I mean, it was it was everything I needed. I rested up. It was fantastic. Again, over and over and over again. Everything Every, you need, it's that, everything you need happens. That's amazing. That's amazing. Let me just, you just have to. You just have to relax. You have to. You have to be willing to let it to let it happen. Uh, the and like I said, the connections you make with people. Are, are are priceless amazing let me just um light up the, the light in the one minute <laughs> let let that be stay like that. that. <laughs> so, um, Chris, um, in your community, um, how we talk about the Camino? How we spread the word of the Camino in your community? Uh, obviously, in my I, I have a I have a parish, yeah, and and every time I've gone, I've I take hundreds of pictures. Uh, and now videos, and and when I get back, I'll I'll make presentations. To and my my people have gotten tired of hearing about it, uh, but I am connected with the local pilgrim group in Dallas. And a couple of times we didn't do it last summer, but but twice before that on St James Day we've had something in my church to celebrate Santiago's Day. And one year, I think we watched a movie. One year, we just had we we had a gathering. I invited the the, the local pilgrim group to come, and and we just we had food. We talked about it. We had people telling stories. Uh, it's just just getting together like that. Uh, people through my connections with the church know that I've done this every other year, and they know that it's something I'm I'm passionate about. And so I get I get people reaching out to me and saying, "Okay, tell me about the Camino. I'm thinking about going." Somebody said that you know something about this. Can you tell me? So I've I've been able to be a help to 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 facilitate other people going. I've been able to give advice about different routes. Uh, so I I try to help wherever I can. But I've but among my the connections that i have i've got a reputation <laughs> <laughs> about that um 
You may not know, but um, a, f uh, a few minutes ago, we told you talk about um, someone, and I may know that someone, um, and that's why I want to talk about about that person. Um, just a moment. There. Can you can you see this guy? You know this yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah, that's Steve. That's Steve. Um, so, um, what do you think about his work with veterans? Oh, I think it's, I think it's wonderful. I'm just kind of getting, uh, I've, he and I have connected up a little bit. Uh, I've never met him face to face. Yeah. Uh, but, but he is all, he knows an, another friend of mine. Uh, and, and I've heard nothing but good, good work about Steve's, uh, the, his Warriors on the Way program has been an amazing thing and it's been a healing thing for for veterans who have come back from the war with all sorts of trauma that they're working through. And it and, and like I said, yeah, he's gotten he I don't know how he got him got permission to do it, but he said Mass and Osobrero oh. <laughs> and several and several other places. But he's gotten permission to use the church for his group. Yeah. Which is which but he brings a group of people along with him. And, and sometimes he's traveling with as many as 12 people. I'm much more comfortable being a solo pilgrim. Yeah. About that, um, on the, on the, on the Albert where I, where I am volunteer, um, at, uh, at this side, at the side of the Albert, there's a search. And often, not often, sometimes, sometimes, um, mainly on the Portuguese Camino, I don't know about the other Caminos, but they like, they are like this big group of, uh, mainly um, a group of uh, Polish people. The, the, the Polish people, they are very, very Christian. Um, and it's often to, for, for you to see pilgrims uh, from Pol Poland uh, walking the Camino with, with the priest. Mm -hmm. uh, like 10, like 10, 10, 10, 10 persons and one, one of their priests. And each day, each day, each stage, uh, in the final of, of the stage, they had a mess. And sometimes, um, that happened say, uh, twice with me, being a hospital leader. Um, we, because this, this church they, isn't uh, used very much, so I have the key, and if they mm -hmm. want, I can let them use and and do the mess. There's other churches on the Portuguese Camino that is possible too, but yeah. uh, with the other Caminos, I don't know. But um, I th I think it probably is possible. I've just I've never asked. But I guess it's possible. I guess it's yeah, possible. I think it probably is. But I I've always I I, I go to mass every I attend mass every time I can. Actually, all, I always I always check to see if there is a pilgrim mass. Usually it's eight o'clock in the evening, and I'm, almost always I'll go. Actually, oh. one of the most amazing moments on the Camino it was on the Primitivo, um, in the place where you um, slipped the stage uh, before Fonsagrada in Grandes de Salim, um, mm -hmm. and there um, I know it's possible for a priest that they, they they want to do. A mess they can't uh, because I, I talk I talk to, to the priest there I went to the pilgrims mess there it was really really special with the pilgrims blessing and uh, it was amazing because they had like this um, I don't know what how, how you call it in English but you they have like some bones from a saint yes relics have, uh, relics that exactly and they use the relics on the pilgrims' blessing, and that was oh neat. No, <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome, and that's why it was um, for you attending a mass on the Camino. Uh, how special it is! Oh, I, like I said, that's 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 all. That's part of my day, if it can possibly be. Uh, the first the first time I went, the very first night on the Camino in Rances Valles. Well, was the first pilgrim mass I attended, and and it, 
the, the priests there welcomed everybody from wherever they came and, and invited, invited us up to come at the end of the mass for a blessing. So, you know, and it was, who's, who's in English, who's in Spanish, who's in Polish, well, you know, four or five different languages. Uh, and, but over and over and over again, there had been the experience of attending mass and knowing the connection, feel the connection with you and every other pilgrim that's come through there before you. That's amazing. How about, how about, how about this? The, the, this. The, the pilgrim mass in Estea, where I left my pants on the yeah. clothesline, uh, I, I, I was very impressed by the priest. Sometimes the Spanish priests are, don't seem to me to be all that reverent or careful, but this man celebrated the most beautiful mass because of his obvious devotion. And, and in giving us the blessing at the end of the mass, he, he, he also, you know, he said, make sure that when you get to Santiago, you remember me and hug the saint for me. You know, and, and it was obvious that he was connected. And, and I mean, just telling you about it right now, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of this guy. Uh, I, 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 I belong to that community. And my sense of, of belonging is, is, is reinforced through my sharing sacramentally along the way. That makes it, it it's, it, it's all part of it. Now I have you, I have a video for you, for me to show you. Okay. And um, I guess you like it. For me, it was on my first, not on, the, yes, yes. Mm, okay. Uh, on my first free Caminos, every time I finished the Camino, I was able to watch this. <laughs> Yeah, there's Armando. That was two weeks before I was there. I can't watch more if start, I start quiet. Sorry. I'm surprised you didn't find one of my videos. <laughs> oh. I've got two or three on YouTube. Yeah. That, that I took. And then, and then when the first time I went, the first Camino I took, I got back home and I found that I could order one. Yeah. 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 The small one. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's about this big. Yeah. Well, I put it up in my church and we swung it from the ceiling. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> it's on YouTube. You ought to check out my channel. I need to check out your channel, definitely. <laughs> no, I, 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 and I, I left that church. Uh, I was, when I, I, I came back from the Camino and it was within, within the next year that I had been called from that church in Fort Worth, Texas, over to where I am now in Dallas, but I had already put the boda up of, I, I call mine the boda fumerito. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and uh, I, I swung it on Christmas at the midnight mass. At the end of the mass, we, we, swung, the, we swung the boda. And then I celebrated the next February, I celebrated my 25th anniversary of ordination as a priest. And so all of my friends, my, my fellow priests in the diocese, and my bishop was there with me, and then we swung the boat at the end of the mass. Uh, and then I then that was in February, and, and in June I moved to Dallas. So it's still there; it still hangs from the ceiling, and they swing it from time to time. Uh, but that was my gift 
to them. That's amazing. Uh, the Boda Fumiero is is what it's all about. Absolutely. Oh, I've got uh, lots. Of, I've got lots of stories about the Boda Fumiero. Uh, I have one, but I I, I, I can tell it a recording uh, because I I really wiping myself out. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But but after the recording, I will. I will tell the story because you deserve it to hear. Um, so, uh, Chris, um, we are almost finishing here, but one last question. Um, what can you tell to someone who never walked the, the Camino? If you think you should, you probably should. Over and over and over again, I've run, I've, I've talked to pilgrims who somehow or other were encouraged to go and found themselves curious about it and looking into it. Uh, there are other people that it just doesn't seem to, doesn't seem, seem to sound like anything they want to do. But if you think you should, if there is some part of you that thinks you should, you probably should because it will change your life. It'll wreck your life. <laughs> It'll take so, over your life. <laughs> it's all good though. It's a good thing. So Chris, we're finishing here. Well, thank you so much for, for doing this with me. My it's pleasure. a pleasure. Thank you, thank you. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm glad to meet you. Glad to have a chance to visit with you. And, and St. James bless you, please. And God. And you. God bless and you. you. Igualmente.